it's Presley at ActiveGames.com here, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of the chemistry of milk, where I'm going to be talking a little bit about how you can make milk into whipped cream or butter. You might have seen my pie face video, where we made our own whipped cream to play pie face, and we made that on our own with just some heavy cream that we bought, and as well as I learned that if you just put some heavy cream in a Ziploc bag and you keep shaking it around, it'll turn into butter, and I was really amazed by how the milk would just turn into heavy cream and then turn into butter and I thought that was really cool so we did a little bit of a unit study on it and now I'm going to be talking about it a little bit today. So first before we talk about how milk can turn into butter we need to understand a little bit about what milk is made of. So milk is made out of mostly water which these little blue blocks um, are water right here and then there is also lots of, there's um, all milk is about 3% fat, so we are going to be using these little yellow blocks to be fat. So there's little fat sprinkled throughout this um, water. And about 1% of um, fat is this really cool thing called a phospholipid. So let's talk a little bit about phospholipids. So uh, these phospholipids are these green and red blocks. And there's one side, the green side, that is hydrophilic. And that means that it loves water and it wants to be with the water. And there's one side that's hydrophobic, which means that it hates water and it wants to be out of the water and away from the water. So if you have one of these in here, then it's probably what it's going to end up doing is the hydrophobic side is going to push itself to the top and the hydrophobic side is going to be out of the water and the hydrophilic side is going to be in the water and now that's happy because the side that hates water is out of the water and the side that loves water is in it. And, and it will usually do that unless there are these little fat globs in it. And these phospholipids will come and they will wrap around these little fat globs and they're still happy because their hydrophobic side isn't in the water it's touching the little fat glob and the hydrophilic side is still all in the water so they're still happy and it creates these little fat globs right here and this is all throughout milk so this happens over and over again all throughout milk and you have these little globs of fat surrounded and then those will also start floating to the top they're still a little bit lighter than the water so they'll float to the top and then if you skim these off, that is cream. And that's how we're going to make heavy cream, which is what we make our milk and butter out of. And another really cool thing um, that's like this is soap. It is actually like a lot like this. Soap is made out of little phospholipids, except instead of taking a glob of fat, the phospholipids take a little bit of dirt with it. So it'll wrap around the piece of dirt, and then you still have the side that loves water out of it, so when you wash your hands, then it globs around the dirt particles, and then it washes away because it wants to stay with the water. And that's how soap works and helps get the dirt off of your hands. I always knew it, I knew that it brought the dirt with it, but I never knew that it was made out of these. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a lot of the little fat globs with fat and phospholipids and I'm just going to put them all throughout this to make heavy cream. So I've got the heavy cream here with the phospholipids and the water and everything and this is what heavy cream is right here. So actually a cool fact is to make whipped cream you need to have at least 35% fat in your milk. So you can't whip milk, you can't whip half and half, and you especially cannot whip skim milk at all. That would be really bad. I'll show you why it has to be 35% or more in a second. Okay, so what happens when you start to whip the cream and you put it in the mixer like in this video here is it does pretty much exactly what you think it does. It tears this all apart. Everything's all mixed up and the phospholipids aren't happy anymore. They're freaking out still. They're like, ah, I want to be at the top, but I also want to be at the bottom. And they're freaking out. And they're eventually all the fat's going to find itself. A little bit of the fat's going to start to find itself. And then the phospholipids are going to start to find that fat and create these little bigger globs of fat in here, which makes it a little bit more heavier than just normal milk. So now that all the fat has found itself and the phospholipids have wrapped around that fat, there's still a little bit of phospholipids left over and they didn't find any fat because the fat globbed all together and they don't have their like one fat that they're all wrapping around. So normally they would just find their way to the top and then they'd be happy there. But what also happens when you are whipping cream is a little bit of air particles come in, which is what these ping pong balls are going to be. So the phospholipids will find one of the air particles and wrap around it 
and once it wraps around the air particle, then it it's still happy. It has the air particle, and it's not go and it's not touching water in the side that's hydrophobic, but it's still touching water in the side that loves water. So those will come in, and they'll be all throughout your whipped cream, and that would make it. That's what makes it light and frothy, and like the consistency of whipped cream. And this is why you need to have at least 35% fat milk to whip it, because they'll. Um, if you keep the air particles in, but you don't have enough fat and you don't have enough phospholipids, the air particles will come in and then they'll just float away and it won't keep that light frothy texture that it needs to be whipped cream. And what happens if you keep breaking it down, and especially if you're not using a mixer, if you're actually using a bag and you're shaking it around, is what will happen is eventually um, almost, not all, but most of the fat will find itself and it'll start to get surrounded by phospholipids and it just makes this big fatty chunk and that is butter. So when I made it in the bag, you basically end up with a bag of water with a big thing of butter in it and that's exactly what's happening here. You have your big fat thing, you have your big fat thing that's like fat and surrounded by phospholipids and then you still have the water that isn't part of this little glob here and that is how you make butter. This science, like all science, is something that's happening around you every day, and it's really cool to know what's going on when you're making butter or when you're making whipped cream or whatever, because you'll have you have something like that around you, and it's just really cool to know how that all works and how you make these things. And pretty much all cooking is chemistry, so the better you understand chemistry, the better you understand cooking. So if you like what we're doing, then please subscribe. It really, really helps us out, and it will definitely help us to make a lot more science content like this. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.